morning, everyone. Growing up in a poor and broken family was not easy for me. I used to live with my mom and two uncles, but they all abused me physically, and one of my uncles even sexually abused me at a very young age, and I lost my innocence. I grew up without my biological father, so it was my Christian grandmother who raised me because my mother was not always there to take care of me either. I often caught my uncles, stepfather, my mom, and other people in our, uh, in our house watching pornography and doing drugs. But the most difficult struggle that I had was about my identity, whether I am a man or a woman. At the age of seven, I began playing the girls' toys and wearing dresses. When I was alone, I would wear my grandmother's shoes, use a blanket as a dress, and wrap a towel around my head and pretend I had a long hair. In school, I developed feelings for one of my classmates, but he was a boy. This was the first time I realized that I was a gay. I had similar feelings right up through college where I became even more open about my sexuality and entered fully into the gay community. At the age of 17, I met a friend from my hometown who was a transgender woman. Two weeks later, I quit my job and decided to go with this friend and start a new life in the city. I began dressing as a woman and grew my hair long. I felt that my dream of becoming a woman was now a reality. To support myself, I started to work in a club as an inter entertainer, at the same time, a prostitute. I even went to other countries with other transgender women to work as a professional prostitute. This was the only way for me to earn money to support ourselves because I was discriminated against for being transgender. I became obsessed with myself and started taking hormones and had surgeries to become more feminine. I also went on a strict diet in order to maintain my figure. I started competing in a lot of beauty pageants in the Philippines, and then I won of the biggest trans pageantry competition on television as the Super Serena Queen of Flowers. It was then the name Sabel Gonzalez was born, and I started becoming well, very well known in the LGBT community. Despite my success, I was still not satisfied. I joined online dating websites for transgenders where I eventually find a man who married me. We moved to the US, but after a couple of years, we divorced. I moved to Los Angeles, where I became involved in the vibrant Los Angeles transgender community. Again, I had success as a transgender model and even sh shoot an ad campaign in Brazil. I also landed a role in the US TV show Law and Order Special Victims Unit playing a transgender woman, model, who was murdered in a hate crime. Another painful failed relationship led me to pray and ask God, why this is happening in my life? Why me? I began to cry and thinking, what is my purpose in this world? Searching and searching for my identity, but not being able to find it. It was then I met yet another guy who soon invited me to live with him. While driving to his place, I felt such a peace that I could finally see the wonder of nature that surrounded me. High mountains, beautiful trees, and a quiet neighborhood. Everything was perfect. He is kind, stable, decent, and successful. I didn't have to worry about my needs. I live in a beautiful house, had an allowance every week, ate delicious food, and it seemed like I was living my dream. Every morning, I would listen to Christian songs of praise and worship with my devotional book and pray some habits I pick up from my Christian grandmother who raised me. I soon realized that despite everything that I had, there was still something missing in my life. I felt a real need in my life that could not be satisfied by anyone or anything. So I opened my laptop and typed 
preaching on the YouTube search bar. I was direct, redirected to a message by Pastor Bong Saking of CCF, who was preaching on 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, which says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't for yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin, or who worship idols, or commit adultery, or are male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. I was really overwhelmed and felt that God was speaking directly to me through the message of the pastor. I decided to get my own Bible to read, and, and while I was reading the word of God, he convicted my heart and enlightened my mind with the truth. And I feel the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. I found myself crying, confessing, and ask forgiveness from the Lord for all the sins that I have done. I repented of my own sin life and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I soon shared my newfound conviction and faith with the man that I was leaving and told him that he needed, that we needed to stop our sexual relationship because it is immoral and sinful in the eyes of God and that we can still be friends. Actually, it's here. By God's grace, he accepted and respected my decision and now he treats me as his adopted son. I pray to the Lord to give me a church that I can attend, and through his guidance, he gave me CCFLA, where I don't feel discriminated. Little by little, I am finding my way to have a better life. I pursue intimacy with the Lord by spending more time with him. God continues to speak me, to me through the Bible, through dreams and visions circumstances, and people that he's using to lead me in his way. I thought the only cure of homosexuality is to be heterosexual or to be manly, or to have a masculine body and to be a tough guy, but I am wrong. Holiness through Jesus Christ is the answer. To be a real man is not just to be a man, but to be a Christ-committed follower and one who lives out Christ's likeness. A man that is willing to sacrifice his life to share the word of God. And the good news that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. With the help of the Lord, I have changed the way I live. I cut my hair and have started wearing men's clothes. It is not easy to do this by myself. But because of the comfort and guidance of the Lord, I know I can do it. Recently, I posted my new image as a man in Facebook, in my Facebook, and it very quickly went viral throughout social media. A lot of articles have already been written, and I was also covered in the news about my transformation. This, this is not about me, for it is the Lord who has transformed me for His will in my life. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, behold, the new has come. I found my peace in Jesus, the truth of the Bible, the way of life to be with our Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. Now I am walking in my life by his instructions and will, depending on the Holy Spirit to give me the strength to obey his commandments. I am sharing the gospel of the word of God with my family, friends, and with some of the LGBT community. I regularly attend in singles midweek D group and recently started an online D group for the LGBT community back in the Philippines. We share our stories, how God changed our life, as well as discipling one another. The, the meaning of LGBT is no longer lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. God gave us a new meaning. 
We called it LJBT. Now means love Jesus, believe to be transformed. Praise God. Tonight, I am going back to Philippines to complete my transition back to being a man. To have a reconciliation with my family and to start serving the Lord for the rest of my life. This is just the beginning of my new life with Jesus. Sabel Gonzalez is just a history but the new Mark Stephen has come, has been born again with the Holy Spirit. Psalms 139 says, You are a child of God. You are wonderfully made, dearly beloved, and precious in His sight. Before God made you, He knew you. There is no one else like you. I am Mark Stephen. By the grace of the Lord, I have been saved and forgiven. To God be the glory and all praises to Him.